Squanicook Meadows, I assume. Is yes, correct. Correct. Jim? correct. Uh, and Jim, you are recording this, correct? Yep. Okay, I forgot to make that announcement. Apologize. Um, so I'll give you the floor. Yeah. Um, so we did. We submitted a survey drawing to Caroline previously to show the renovations um, or the improvements we want to do to the Squanicook Cook Meadows area. Um, I don't know if you guys are seen the drawing or familiar with it, but um, consistent. I live, I live right behind it, so right, right yes. behind it. Okay, great. <laughs> Um, it's, in, it's in their packet, so they do have a copy of the drawing. Okay, great. Thank you. So the, in general sense, especially if you live behind it, there's currently there's a front field and a back field. And what we're proposing to do is turn that middle brush area into another playable surface for field with grass for um, field preservation, um, as well as the ability to, you know, put additional smaller fields there for the, potentially the in-town program and, and just kind of create a, a more vibrant and it's a great space of land that's not really being put to any use right now. Um, also looking to expand the parking a little bit onto that brush area. Um, it does get congested in there now when there is, um, you know, sometimes we have games on the front field and the back field. So a little additional parking, um, you know, for safety and, and ease of getting in and out would go a, a long way with that. Um, Currently within the lease, it's also described as having uh, two structures. And what we are proposing in that drawing is removing the existing structure and making a slightly larger one. So a, a snack shack and storage shed would be combined into one footprint. Um, and as well as having a little kind of a lightning shelter space overhang in there, kind of like what you see at the uh, Spalding Memorial School outdoor for mm -hmm. outdoor activities. Um, one of the things we have these beautiful fields, but we do soccer camps, things like that over the summer. We really don't have the safety requirements of a lightning shelter or something like that to host those there. So we would like to enable that. Um, and that's kind of the, the gist of what the drawing outlines. Okay. Um, so, and Jim, I guess this is to you. Does this, is this a planning board? piece beyond us or is just does this need blessing from us i'm not sure which way we have to go uh, is the building commissioner on the call i know that he was i saw him when i left the building eric are you here i am Excellent. i am here um so uh, i would defer the building commissioner in terms of whether or not this is something that will go through um any of our permitting processes um so uh, what, you're, what, you're here, what you're here for tonight, Mr. Chairman, is pursuant to the lease between the town and TESA, um, any, any improvements or changes to be made need to be approved by the select board. Um, so with that, Eric, building commissioner, what are you thinking? Uh, as long as they have site plan review, uh, this is the first I'm seeing the project. So, uh, but it's definitely uh, adding parking, stuff like that. That's going to trigger site plan review. If it's already been approved, then, then so be it. And then a 24 by 60 um, shed and yeah, that's a building permit. I mean, yep. building permit in general, say you got accessibility issues and stuff, but um, they have allowances for certain activities and stuff. I, I haven't really had a chance to review. There's no plans. It's still preliminary. Yep. Right, and Matt Fournier, this is uh, Matt Fournier. I'm working with TESA um on the project as well um as a, a parent and a coach in the league but also as a contractor uh, locally um in, in reviewing the documents and working with whitman and bingham um it does appear that it does need to go through the board and parking and use of the fields as long as it was out of the protected areas was previously approved um but that being said any structures we would put in i would assume uh, would definitely need permits for approval for ada compliance footings um, and just structure overall um, and making sure that it applies with the, the use and the need, um, any setback regulations and things like that from abutters. Uh, additionally, anything with the parking, um, you know, I, I would assume we would review that as well in, in the same manner and then allow um, Commissioner uh, Charlin here to make a decision on, you know, I guess what he deems as necessary in his opinion, if it needs to go through approval or we're changing the space um, for anything else. Um, outside of that, the grounds themselves, for anybody familiar with the fields back there, um, 
as Matt Green had mentioned, it's the space between the two existing fields that was previously about, I don't know, 12 or 15 years ago at this point, I guess, when they originally made the field, um, had been flattened out in sort of um, the early stage preparation for future future work, but the fields are already flat over there and the grounds are flat. And I guess the goal right now is to be able to create greenscape and allow us to start prepping them um, as funds come in. Uh, the benefit of the lightning shelter is the fact that we'll be able to, you know, market the community and market the league and, and market ourselves better uh, in order to bring in leagues, bring in children and ultimately bring in funds to, to create a better space down there for everyone. Uh, okay. The parking ad, the parking ad does help with the safety overall. Um, it will also prevent uh, people, which is a, a struggle that the board has had. And I think everybody overall is trying to keep people out of protected areas. Uh, all of this work is out of the protected areas. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's hard to patrol and traffic people from uh, not parking where they shouldn't. So this will definitely help with that process and overall safety as far as allowing cars to pass through. Um, so the added, the added uh, parking would also help on that end. Okay. Um, and as if I remember correctly, because I was on the board way back when, when this first started, the, the original plan was to have a total of six soccer fields throughout the grounds. Um, I don't remember how many buildings necessarily, but um, this is what we had for funding <laughs> back in the day. So, yeah. And it's a similar, um, similar, I mean, there's so much space to work with. So we're not really, we're not changing any of the greenscape or the green space that's out there. And we're not encroaching on any of the protected lands that were originally delineated. Um, so that was clear that we're staying out of that area. Um, okay. And, and um, really, I guess from or the fields just go into field painting and how that programming works later to, to make the best, safest use for everybody and ultim you know, ultimately use the fields the best we can. And, and Jim, for the record, I, I see Veronica in the room now. So um, can you add her to the roll call, please? Got her. Um, those are the questions I had. So um, Don, Veronica, I'm not sure if you did. The only question I had was, uh, does this also have to go before the Conservation Commission? This is Matt again. I, I think looking through the documents and the fact that we're out of the protected areas and this was already previously approved to be field, I don't know that we would need to, although I think it would be the right thing for TASA to do just to, at a minimum, informally have the conversation about you know what we're doing down there. But then again, you know, that does go back to Commissioner Chartland's opinion on, um, I guess, the form of intent or anything like that as far as, you know, what he deems necessary or not. So it's worth a conversation. Yeah, seeing as how the project predates me, I don't I don't have all the information at hand, but I could run it by Dave Hankel okay. when I see him. And in the bio, and in that um, the original order of conditions that was approved for the field, um, there is content and verbiage about you know, how we treat fields and how we handle um, fertilization and things like that. And there would be no change or anything on that end. It's really just the uh, addition of this lightning shelter and really making this um, area that we can't treat as grass right now or even, you know, utilize for the children is really to be able to create grass there and ultimately over the next couple of years be able to have nice grass that we can start using as fields. Um, Veronica, did you have anything? Can't hear you. Veronica, you're on mute. I was going to call you rookie, but yeah, no, you're not. You still are. <laughs> there she is. There I am. Um, okay. Uh, the only thing I would say is pretty much to reiterate what you just said. Um, as far as checking with conservation for the protected area, orders of conditions expire. And so I, I would just want to consult with they have you consult with Dave um, what you're doing with outside of that protected area, or if anything needs to be done to protect the protected area while the construction is underway. That's all. Yep, which, def which definitely makes sense, and I agree with that. Um, especially on how we're going to treat the air while we're working and silt fencing if we need and, and whatever they're going to require. So there might also be a time period that you can or cannot work. 
um, based on the um, endangered species on the property. So. So Jim, with that, do we just need a, a motion to accept and, and with the contingencies that we, of yeah, the building I, I, permit? If Wayne, one, one, other, one other question. Sure, um, I also, enough. I was looking through the, uh, some records and uh, their uh, lease is up this coming uh, June, this next June. So I, I would think that they would want to get that lease straightened away and extended before they do start any work. Uh, yes, that is something uh, we are working on now with the lawyer. And, and our goal is to really keep kind of the same terms. We wanted to get this plan included as part of the lease to replace some of the drawings that were in the previous lease so that everything was kind of laid out in clear. And so you could see our path of, of intention over the next several years to upgrade the property in, in the program. So Mr. Chairman, to your question, um, if it's the inclination of the board to support the plan, um, I would only suggest that you make it contingent upon the the, the group TASA receiving all local approvals and entitlements that are required. Um, can I get a motion, please? Um, I move that we approve the plan contingent on TASA um, getting all the local um, permits and approvals and orders of conditions or whatever that are required to um, have the project go forward. I'll second that. Um, any other discussion? I'm good. All right, all those in favor? Veronica uh, Kelly. Yes. Veronica and Kelly, Miller, yes. sorry. Wim and Wayne Miller, yes. Um, guys, as a former soccer player and coach, I just want to thank you for all the work you guys did. Um, I know you put a lot of work into it this past summer, so it looks fantastic. Well, thank you. We appreciate the sentiment and, and certainly the time here and support here tonight. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys. Man. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. You too. All right. On to appointments. We won appoint Cody Freihofer as I can't see today. Data on call firefighter EMT. Can I get a motion, please? Um, I move that we appoint Cody Freihofer as the paid on call firefighter EMT to the Townsend Fire EMS Department, contingent <clears throat> upon the passing of a medical exam and quarry check. Second. Any discussion questions? to be done. All those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cal, yes. Wayne Miller, yes. 3-2 appoint Destiny Deschens as a paid on-call EMT. Can I get a motion, please? I move that we appoint Destiny Deschens as a paid on-call EMT to the Townsend Fire EMS Department, contingent upon the passing of a medical exam and quarry check. Second it. Any questions on this one? Okay. Oh, all those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cow, yes. And Miller, yes. Three three point Wade Messamore as a per diem firefighter paramedic. Can I get a motion there, please? I move that we appoint Wade Messamore as a per diem firefighter paramedic to the Townsend Fire EMS Department. Contingent upon the passing of a medical exam and quarry check. I'll second that. Any questions there? Nope. All those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cal, yes. Wayne Miller, yes. Three, four, review, consider, appoint members to the town properties committee. Jim, what do we got here? Well, we got response back from the highway department and um, Mr. Smith, the highway superintendent has no recommendation from highway. So that leaves us with no current additional volunteers that I'm aware of. I don't know if Veronica, if you had anything specific, you would ask that this be placed back on again. I, I did. Um, there, there were all those questions about um, vacancies and how they're filled and all that. And we are the ones responsible for appointing um, 
the town properties committee, I did have one little detail. Looking at the posting, it says that the term is from March 1st to February 28th in the posting on the website, but I thought we were appointing on the um, annual basis, July 1st to June 30th. Is that correct or incorrect? Appointments are generally um, July 1 to June 30. I'm not certain if there's anything specific in the bylaw for the properties committee that contemplates it being other than that, but I can check I, that and find out. I, I thought that when we appointed at the last meeting, we appointed through June 30th. Um, I could be mistaken, but I was just surprised to see that on the posting. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's that. I, I asked, hopefully, you know, thinking that other departments would put people in. So there are five more appointments. And I did ask Adam about this based on the charter and the things that were discussed about that over the course of the past week or five days or whatever. So the Town Properties Committee is a seven person board and um, we're appointing them now. We're appointing them because the planning board really needs that, that committee in place um, to do the, D, um, the uh, work that they're doing, the DLTA grant work, um, to look at properties for the age restricted housing and the um, expedited permitting process in town. So, um, so based on how appointments are written in the charter, and this is something that maybe the charter review committee should weigh in on um, as well, is that we have two members appointed. That makes them a quorum of the board. They can meet within the next you know, week, if they chose, next three days, and they could notify us of vacancies of the five vacancies. If we don't appoint within 30 days, they can appoint whomever they choose. Um, so um, I, you know, I do, I, I asked Adam these questions. I had other questions as well that were brought up because of that conversation. And I can either, you know, read the questions and forward the answers to all of you or and how do we handle that with the open meeting law? If you're going to discuss it this evening, um, which you've just done and um, intend to forward it to the members of the board, then it would be probably cleanest if you just address them during the open meeting right now. Okay. Um, because we do have the public now having been given notice of um, your, your questions to which you have answers. So they should be entitled to hear what they are. Okay, so the other questions are, um, if you look at, 3-2D of the charter, the heading is appointment authority. And I asked what that actually means. And um, the, the term appointment authority is not defined by the charter, but appointing authority is a term used throughout mass general law um, to refer to any person, board or commission with the power to appoint. Um, he said that section 3-2D of the charter vests the board of selectmen with the power to make a variety of appointments. Um, designation of the Board of Selectmen as appointing authority per section 32D does not, in his opinion, alter the analysis below about the Town Properties Committee. For example, with respect to the Conservation Committee, Commission, it is undisputed that the Selectmen are the appointing authority, but Townsend's charter includes a further, further and more specific provision, namely section 79D, that the appointment power will default to the remaining members of a multiple member board if and only if proper notice is provided to the Board of Selectmen and the Selectmen fail to timely act to fill it. Um, uh, there, going on with that, um, does the BOS appointing authority only apply to the first 30 days of a notified vacancy or term end vacancy? No. First, the appointing authority precedes the vacancy. The selectmen have the authority to conduct their due diligence and prepare to, a make, to make an appointment even before the vacancy occurs. They then get an additional 30 days after written notice of a vacation, vacancy <laughs> not vacation, from the appointed body to fill it. Second, I've not said that the empowerment of the remain, remaining members of an appointed body to fill 
a vacancy per section 79F of the charter equates to a rescission of any authority that the selectmen have to make an appointment should the selectmen act first. To say it differently, I doubt that any court or other tribunal would invalidate a selectman's appointment occurring on the 35th or 50th day after receipt of a written notice of a vacancy. For example, if the remaining members of the body at issue had not yet acted to fill it. And then I, I asked um, if a vacancy is never filled by a multiple member board, that position remains open forever. Really? No. First, per section 79F of the charter where the remaining members of an appointed body fill a vacancy, it is only for the remainder of an unexpired term. A subsequent vacancy, meaning, meaning for the for next term of years, could be filled by the original appointing authority in the usual course. Second, see below, and that's the question I just read, regarding the selectman's authority, even after the remaining members of an appointed authority are vested with the power to appoint. So we can still appoint um, after that. And uh, should the Board of Selectmen choose not to reappoint someone, as is the case currently with the Conservation Commission, the board in question could just turn around and appoint the person themselves, unless the Board of Selectmen has someone slotted to slide right in. Is that correct? Yes and no. Yes, nothing would prevent the remaining members of the commission, if the appointing authority ultimately defaults to them, from appointing a member that the selectmen previously considered and declined to appoint. But no, the remaining commissioners couldn't just turn around and make that appointment unless the selectmen have an alternate candidate slotted to slide right in. If the, influ if the inference is that the commissioners could expedite the timeline described above. The phrasing of your question suggests that the remaining commissioners could use their eventual power of appointment as leverage and I doubt that is the objective of the charter provision. The selectmen should have every opportunity, both in advance of the expiration of a commissioner's term and for a minimum of 30 days thereafter to make the appointment themselves. So these were questions that I had after reading the opinion that Adam had um, sent to you, Jim, and ultimately to all of us. And so I will send this out to everybody. Um, uh, Adam sent them to me yesterday evening. So I will get them out to you now that we've covered them in an open meeting. Excellent. So Thank you. Uh, town properties, we still do need to appoint. Um, so we are looking, I guess this is public notice for anybody that's watching this to, if you're interested in being on town properties to um, find the form online and the town website and fill out a volunteer response form for that because certainly it would be nice to have a full board. That's all. Great, anything else? Not on town properties, no. Okay. Let's move to three, five, review, consider appoint two members of the conservation committees. And I think we have three volunteer forms, correct Jim? Mr. Chairman, actually I emailed you each um, while we were waiting on um, this meeting to start. I was checking email. I have an email that came in this evening that I forwarded to you um, titled volunteer response form. It reads, this is William Martino. I regret to inform the selectmen that I will have to withdraw my volunteer response in regards to joining the conservation commission due to an overload at work. Thank you, William Martino. So you should have each received a copy of that email. I forwarded it again while we were waiting for the meeting to start. I didn't see the email because I was in the executive session and then getting coming home and booting out. So. I didn't. I didn't either. But I'll I'll take that as the notification that he pulled out. Yeah, I I read it. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So, what do you guys want to do? I move that we appoint Jennifer Eaton to the um, Conservation Commission um, for 
a term to expire um, June 2023? June 30th, correct. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion or reviewed or form? No, I'm, I reviewed it. I'm almost that. New blood. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cow, yes. Wayne Miller, yes. Um, the other submission is one we've voted on previously, so I don't know what to do with that one, Jim. I just put each of the three that we had. Um, you you voted on it in the you voted on it when it came in as a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. Um, I don't believe you voted on it since it's been resubmitted as a, a separate volunteer response form. So I just wanted to cover my obligation by putting each of the ones that we have received into the record. Okay, so do I ask for a motion? Um, and there is one. I, I don't imagine there will be, uh, but. I have to ask if, if, if yeah. there's a motion on the floor. Um, I have a question. When we did not appoint on the, what, what was the date? August 25th, is that correct? I, I, don't, 24th, I don't remember. August 25th. When was the date of the meeting in? Um, I'd have to go back and look. I don't know off the top of my head either. So the, um, um, the position that we did not reappoint needed to be posted for 10 days. Did that occur? I don't know. I think Kathy, the town clerk, was on the call and indicated that she had um, made the postings. Um, can I tell you as I sit that I observed them on the board? No, I do not know. Okay. So that may need to be reposted. The opening needs to be posted for 10 days prior to filling, correct? I don't know if those are employment. Uh, I'd have to pull the charter to see if that's just employment or if that's any employment or position. Um, but I don't have the document open in front of me right now, so I, I don't know. I could pull it up though, I'm sure. I know that we had to post Mike Turgeon's position for 10 days prior to um, appointing. Well, if we have questions on the procedure, then I suggest we take no action on this at this time until the next meeting. Jim, can you follow up and make sure all that stuff is completed? I will. I will. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, on the floor, one discussed letter of support for the State Department of Fish and Wildlife purchase of land off of Haynes Road. What do we got here? In your packets, you should have a copy of a, a letter that comes in from the Department of Fish and Game. And they are looking at a parcel of land that they have an interest in purchasing the fee to. So they would have ownership. It's a 34.79 acre plus or minus uh, acre parcel of wildlife habitat. They show the uh, map and parcel number and then they show on the attached map uh, the actual assessor's parcel. It is a landlocked parcel that is off Haynes Road and it abuts um, a piece that they notate has been purchased from the town and then that then abuts Townsend Hill, um, I, I presume wildlife management area is their notation of WMA. So this is the state looking to have your support via a letter um, for them to be able to make this purchase. Do you want a motion on that first, Wayne, or do you want to discuss first? Uh, I'll, I'll take a motion first. Um, I move that we um, provide for um, Fish and Game a, a letter of support for the purchase of the 34.79 acre parcel uh, do we have the map block lot? It is 4350. 4350? Yep. A second. Um, I um, believe, oh, sorry. 
Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just going to. Um, I believe that this parcel is one of the parcels that was sold maybe three years back, Jim. I'm not sure. To Talage. Still to Talage. For back taxes. Yep. And so um, my guess is Fish and Game worked with Talage to um, uh, purchase this property because it is adjacent to the wildlife management area. Yep, that's my understanding. Um, I didn't have any questions about it. It looked pretty straightforward to me. Yeah, I have no um, questions either. Okay. Anything else, Veronica? Um, I'm sorry. It, it, did again. you have anything else to? For, oh no, for that's all. Question? That's all. Okay. Um, all those in favor, then? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cal, yes. And Wayne Miller, yes. Can I or ask two. a question? Just very yep. quickly, Jim, do you draft that letter then? Yes. And we'll, then we come in and sign it? Yep. At a staff level, we'll, we'll let you know when it's available for you to come and sign. Okay. Okay, uh, for two review, comment, planning board referrals. First one is Squanaquit Greenways. What do we got here, Jim? You have um, Squanaquit Greenways looking to um, go before the um, site plan review special permit process for a parking lot that they're looking to create uh, adjacent to the, the termination point of the duly newly being developed section of the, the rail trail. So it's gonna be at nine center, assessor's map 51 block 136. Okay, so this is just a standard referral. Thank you yep. for, it, thank it the board. Is. If you have comments, we'll offer them back. If not, just the uh, thank you for your referral. I have no comments. I have no comment. Um, my only comment, I, I think it's good to have a, um, parking lot there for the uh, for the greenways. Um, my only comment, and this is because of planning board stuff, I think that if you're on a town road, um, you can't be head in parking like that. I'm not exactly sure how it's working, but I think the planning board would sort that out. Yeah, they've got to go through um, site plan, so the planning board will be able to address that. Okay, so then from a board of selectmen perspective, I would say that we support um, parking for the rail trail. That's that all the only comment I would make. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Add that to the thank you then, Jim. Yeah. Uh, second one, SBA Towers V or five? I don't know which one this is gonna be. Yep. SBA it's Towers like is a cell tower. Um, existing cell tower going through the process again. Oh, trying so it's already there? To, yep, trying to find my copy oh. of it. But yes, this yeah, is... I, a, I think that's the one off of Ball Road, Wayne. It is. Okay. Yeah. And did you did anybody see where there were any changes being made to it? I didn't think so. I thought it was just a permit renewal. It is. So that's what it, yeah, that's yes. what it looks like. Okay. I have no issues with it then, so another thank you for the referral. I agree. I agree. Okay. Thank you, Jim. On the third one, Ambrose Corporation, if I'm saying that I, Before we go any farther on this one, I have to recuse myself from this one because um, the land trust owns land that is adjacent to it. So um, I'm just going to I don't know. How do, how do I do? Uh, I am recusing myself from discussing this. And so I guess I mute myself and stop the video. I'll see if I can. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So Mr. Chairman, um, you have the mandatory referral form coming from Ambrose um, Corporation. And this is for stormwater management in chapter 175, article five stormwater regulations. The planning board will be holding a public hearing on the application. Uh, this is proposing the removal of 109,000 cubic yards of material from the property at Three Wheeler Road. And then additionally, um, the same project 
before the Zoning Board of Appeals and the um, the referral notice to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit. So same project, two different boards. I have nothing to add to this one. I'll, I'll let them, the two boards, do their thing. Thank you for the referral. Yeah, same Donna. Here. Yeah, okay. same. I could give you a little background. Um, we gave them a permit, permit several years ago, which they haven't taken advantage of. And because there's no renewal process for special permits, they're reapplying. So I don't know if there's going to be any changes, but basically it's terraforming down at their farm and removing all that gravel. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a question on agenda, Jim. I have that again on 4-3. Or is yeah, this? That was oh, just, so it's a zoning board. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, two, two I got it wrong. Yeah, I lumped okay, them so, Okay, so thank you for both of those, I guess would be the. And Veronica's back. Okay, four four town website discussion. I believe this is you, Veronica. It is me. Um, did did um, Carolyn send you all the? Um, I did see. Yes, she did. The email for for web design. Um, yes. I I yes. think um, uh, you know it's it's a six thousand uh, dollar charge to get Civic Plus to look at it and to do some redesign on our website. Um, I, I think that, and Carolyn did uh, talk to the support today and get the Pete, Pete the Barber declaration in the notes um, section on the right hand side of the homepage. So um, I, I appreciate that getting put there so that it can be seen by the town. Um, normally, I think we would put something like that in the newspaper, but we don't really have that anymore that does. Um, simple things like, well, I shouldn't say simple, things like that that are town related, that are non-controversial and just kind of nice. So having it on the website is good. So um, she did manage to figure out how to get that done. So I really appreciate that. Um, but it would be nice to have the redesign done. And we do have money. Uh, she and I had looked at it. There were three different um, buckets of management information money um, and this would come out of one of those so and there are still funds in there that would cover this so i'm not exactly sure um, how we do that do we vote to spend the money on that well uh, mr chairman if i could um I, i've not i've not reviewed the accounts that you and she have spoken about so i would just caution the board before um, making any move to dedicate the funds to website design that we find out what they were actually programmed for originally. Um, if they're in the MIS budget, I know that the MIS budget was um, prepared in the fashion to cover what we anticipated from Guardian plus our existing uh, licenses that we have. So it may be that Carolyn's not familiar with what those lines um, have as obligations against them already, but I'd be happy to look at that first thing tomorrow morning and, and figure that out. Um, I would like that too. Um, Veronica, can I also get a, a scope of work as to what the, I don't think I saw that in the email. Um, um, the, so what I think needs to be done is I think that the responsible individual, whoever that is in every department, just needs to check and make sure that everything is um, correct for the current uh, terms of people and that sort of thing. And once we have that, it's really the home page. And on the email that Carolyn sent out, there were different um, formats. So it's to look at it. I mean, right now, COVID-19 supports, even the thing that we just got through MRPC, the, is it CDBG money for Correct. small business? I mean, to find that on the website, you have to know. There's, if you look at the home page, you, you don't know that those funds are available. You have to go to the planning board and Beth has them up there and she sent an email out that I think, Jim, you forwarded on to all of us, where right. she had said, this is where I've put that information for small business loans because of COVID. Right. Um, is there another place to put it? Well, what I would say typically is that we should have some link 
somewhere on that main page, the home page of the town website that says COVID relief. You know, these are the things that you can click on. Go to, you know, for small business loans or for housing support, or if you are in need of um, food support, where do you go? All of that listed there right now. And we don't really have a place to put that. Um, and, uh, you know, even to get Pete the Barber up there, um, because we have the flu clinic and we have triple E and we have voting information and those are all important. And we only had the possibility to have three things. So Carolyn did talk to support today and got four and she had to delete something because they get put in on that notes se section off to the right based on the date that they go in. So it, it's a we really have to look at the design, not so much the content. We might be able to just do the home page and point to things differently, but I'm not a web designer. I can't do that on my own and talking to support isn't really gonna get us there. But if you click on the links and what she sent, there are different templates that um, Civic Plus does. We, when, when we talked, oh, we right. thought it would be two or 3,000. I was trying to interrupt you, but I was on mute, sorry. <laughs> um, I've been part of four web designs now. Um, I know exactly what needs to be done. Um, and I can, I can lay out exactly what I would ask for a scope of work. Um, so if you don't mind, I can work with Jim on actually laying those out because it's kind of the same thing that we did with the IT piece. We didn't just go to them and say, hey, come fix our IT. Um, we had to generate a scope of work that what we're expecting, how many, you know, like you said, how many uh, boxes on the front page do you have? Um, and, and the big question I have is, is our website um, current with the, the, the current browsers and um, internet piece? Is it mobile ready? Um, right. I, I suspect not. It, it, so that, that'd be the first and foremost piece of it. So I, I can work with you separately. I don't know how we do that, Jim. Yeah, how um, do we do that if not an open meeting? Um, well, if Wayne, if Wayne, Wayne, if you take a take a shot at just putting the the rough sketch of what the guts would be on the scope of work, I can roll that into the standard documents that we have from council that we create st the the scope of work for the various okay. projects that we put out. So if you can give me the guts, I can make the document that I can get it on the next agenda for the board to consider moving forward. Okay, because I have two and, old proposals that I, I'll have to go on my old computer and dig out, but I, I do have that. It's not as complicated as it sounds. And what I do have is what needs to be updated or what pages need to be updated. I have that. I can put it in a form that's a little bit better than my handwriting in a notebook. And, sure. and, and on that I'll point, Veronica, um, on that point, Having heard you say that, one of the items that's been added to the department head list going forward is on the monthly department head list is to have a standing item on the agenda where we talk about everybody's web page, where, you know, okay. is, is everybody up to date? Have you looked at it since last month? Does anything need to change? Just to keep it on the forefront of everybody's mind at least once a month as uh, the department heads gather. So that might be just a, a way to keep a tickler file going on, keeping it fresh. What What is, uh maybe they don't need me to say this is what it is then you know maybe they can just if you if you have some notes yeah if you have I some do. notes that'd be that'd be helpful if you want to just forward them along i'll distribute them out to everybody and um but then just from a you know a forward perspective it'll be at least once a month that'll be a, a reminder on the department head meeting okay That's i'll, I'll try to put that together before the next meeting then all right Thank you, Four or five shared spaces grant update. Uh, where are we at here? Well, it, on your meeting of uh, the 18th of August, you adopted the application and authorized it being sent. It was sent out the next day, the 19th. Um, we did see a notice come out of the governor's office just last week that they had funded this next round and we were not included in that funding. I have reached out to the folks at the um, Mass Department of Transportation, specifically the, the link for shared streets, asking for some feedback and whether or not there's going to be another round offered or an extension of the project further into the fall. I've not had a response yet, um, but that was just, I believe, 
I think I might have copied you guys on it. I think it was last Friday um, that that went out. Whatever the day was, Veronica, that you sent me the the link. Uh, it might have been Friday. It might have yeah. been Friday. I can't. It was either Thursday or Friday. It looks though like I mean this is on a positive. It looks like they increased the amount of monies they did. that they're going to give out. So that's a positive. Yep. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. And something that the something that the um, the consultant that assisted um, was quick to point out is that having this plan drawn and having it ready, there are going to be other opportunities that are going to come up for other grants from a different perspective, whether it's going to be, you know, an open space and recreation grant or something else that this is also going to fit in with. So even if we don't see the open, um, the, the shared spaces grant come through, we do have this in the can and ready to go for the next opportunity. Right. All right, four six, the fun topic of the night. Discuss about Halloween trick or treat. Mr. Chairman, um, every year the select board, it's it's really more of a, a ceremonial vote to declare what day and what hours trick or treat is going to be. There's nothing statutory about it. There's nothing formal or legal that that um, that backs it or requires it. Um, this year, obviously depending on, on your particular feelings about what's going on with COVID, um, you're either saying, I'm not letting my children go home to home, property to property and, and trick or treat, or you're saying, I don't believe it's an issue and I'm going to. Um, so what has been discussed at the department head meeting just this last week is trying to create some alternative opportunity for kids in town to still have the experience of being able to dress up and go out trick-or-treating um, in, in, in a sort. And what the, the angle is right now is to take the entrance to the library senior center complex and around the loop in the back parking lot and then back out Dudley Road and to have, whether it's senior center and library and police and town hall and, you know, cemetery and parks and, you know, different departments with a table set up with prepackaged goodie bags that have been sanitized and cars just come through with their kids as a drive through. And there's a, you know, a, a, an easy and clean and, and sanitary transfer of, you know, candy to kid. And um, it just gives them something to be doing if in fact, there's not going to be a trick or treat opportunity for them this year. So nothing, nothing official yet. It's still being worked on. Um, I know that um, Chief Sartell was looking for a champion. To, to spearhead the effort and I had heard a name that was a very good name to spearhead something like this and he was going to be reaching out and I haven't heard yet if uh, that person's going to in fact take up the charge but that that's what's being looked at at this point I just wanted to get it on the agenda and and let you know that that's something that's in the works. Okay. Yeah because we have a little bit of time I'd also like to see something from the state and the Board of Health um, as guidance because I don't feel comfortable telling people they can go to house to house right now. Yeah, I mean, there, there are folks already posting, however, on social media, um, put out a purple pumpkin on your front walkway or your curb, and that'll signify that, you know, regardless of COVID, we're, we're not letting trick or treat get away from us and you're welcome to come up to our door. So we are gonna see some of that, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't doubt, so. The objective from the chief's perspective is create another opportunity to try to dissuade some of that. Okay. I'd like to talk to him about it myself. So as a liaison, I want to discuss it with him. Excellent. I don't know if you guys had anything to say. No, I, I would like to get feedback from the board of health and find out what the state is saying about it. Can we get all this put together for the next uh, board meeting so that we can make a decision? Because, uh, what is it, the 31st, right? That's yeah. uh, Halloween. And it happens to be a Saturday this year, so. I know. Worst <laughs> possible here to have it. Mm -hmm. well, the, the other okay. piece is um, that a number of communities around us have already officially canceled, taken public votes to cancel trick-or-treating. So there's going to be a pent-up need or, or, or want from kids and parents in neighboring communities. So if if we're not on record as canceling it, we should expect we're going to get an influx. So, and again, that's what the chief is working toward um, 
trying to hedge against. Okay, so let's get that prepared for our next meeting. You got it. All right, work sessions. Um, five one repro review approved housing trust agreement input. That's the one we did last time, Jim. It's correct. This is the one that um, we had the discussion about at the last meeting, and um, the, uh, the state representative um, Chaz Sexton Duranian had indicated that he had a draft that was available. He in fact emailed it out to me um, directly after the meeting, and I forwarded it off um, to council that night. Um, Veronica tickled the issue this past Thursday or Friday and asked if I had heard anything yet. So I reached back out to Adam and he committed that he'd have something in time for you guys to see in advance of the meeting. So uh, I think it was Monday. I think it was just yesterday. Um, I'd have to pull the email up to see, but I think it was just yesterday that I got his comments and forwarded them off to you. So um, you do have his comments and um, they are some of them are relatively innocuous. Um, you know, the mass general law that was cited in the draft is the earlier general law that has since been repealed and there's a new one. So he makes the recommendation to, um, to delete the, the rescinded law and put in the reference to the new one. Um, he said that the, the law allows uh, several other um, rights to um, such a board of trustees that weren't codified in the draft. So he added those in to keep all of the opportunities um, open for the trustees, whoever they may be. Um, and aside from that, there's one comment that he made and Veronica, you might have it in front of you, um, where, he's, where he said, um, in some communities, the ability to um, purchase land is made subject to the approval of the select board. And he didn't know if that was something that the select board wanted to continue, uh, consider in this community. But he wasn't making a judgment on that um, in terms of uh, legality. It was just something that he had seen in other versions. So, um, uh, I, Chaz, had, you had the opportunity to see the draft. I, I should have, I believe I forwarded that off to you as well. Um, no, I did. I have reviewed it. You did send it to me. Um, I, I agree with all of the, um, the changes, um, the, okay. the, the, uh, general law, um, updated, which I am in total agreement of. I personally, I mean, what, uh, you talked about in regards to the powers of the trustee, um, there are 16 that, that he added. Um, and that is up to the Board of Selectmen to, to accept all 16 or if you wanted to pick and choose whatever ones you want. Um, you know, I really don't see um, any problem with all 16, quite honestly. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with the comments. Um, and as far as the, um, the purchasing of land to check with the Selectmen, there will be a Selectmen on the, the trustees, on the, on, as one of the trustees. And the trustees do operate... Um, uh, you know, in concurrently with the board of selectmen. So, you know, it's, it is going to be a board of selectmen decision anyway, you know, how that's how I see it. So if you want to add it, I'm okay with that. If you don't want to add it, I'm okay with that too. So what, what's the feeling of members of the board? If it's, if it meets the, the approval of, of Mr. Sexton Duranian, um, we could accept all changes that were proposed by council into a clean document and have it available for your signatures and we can get up and going. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. I'm fine with that too. Well, I, ha I have one that I want looked at. <coughs> um, I agree with adding all 16. For the most part, I'm in agreement with what he has, but I, on the fifth page, I think it is, the second to the last page where he, added Middlesex South. Okay, it's a, um, it's a mismatch maybe on names. So it's Article 12, Duration of the Trust, the last sentence of the first paragraph. It says, are duly recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds and the Middlesex South Registry, Registry District of the Land Court. Is that correct? or should it match? I wasn't sure. I always do Middlesex South Registry of Deeds. I don't really throw in, you know, when I'm searching for lands, I don't throw in district. 
and he has it in front of registry in one place and after registry in the other place. I, and I, I, yeah, I read the comment, Veronica, that he was adding what you use, which is what I would use, which is the registry. Am I, I don't have it in front of me, but it looked to me like that wasn't in the draft and he was adding that. He yeah. did add the registry of deeds, but right. it doesn't match the name of the Middlesex land court. In other words, he has Middlesex South registry of deeds. That's good. Middlesex South district registry of deeds and the Middlesex South registry district as opposed to district registry. I don't know. Maybe it's the way it is. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just want I can, a confirmation on that. I, I can ask him to confirm that that's correct prior to accepting the change. And okay. if, if it's the pleasure of the board otherwise to, to vote to accept it with the recommendations of council with that one clarification, I can get that clarified tomorrow and accept it. And then you can say sign out of session if you'd like. Okay, well, there's one more thing, because I did send Adam a question right before the executive session, so it was later this afternoon. I wanted to know, under Article 3, Tenure of the Trustees, how that goes with our charter, because now I'm paying attention to that. I've always read the charter with the way I knew things worked, or I assumed things worked in town. If I take out my assumptions, and I read the charter, I read it differently. And so when I read this, I'm, I was like, does this supersede the charter? Or, so if you look at tenure of the trustees. Mm -hmm. I saw your email and I ran right to the document and looked at it myself, so did he answer you? Uh, I haven't looked at email, I, okay. I honestly haven't. I was preparing for that sure. um, executive session and I honestly, ha I, you know, I went through what I could with this, this morning at some point I sent that email and I knew I wouldn't get back to it. But I'm good with everything other than I would want him to just confirm those two things to make sure we have it right in the document or that we know we have to change the charter or maybe it doesn't matter with the charter because it's a trust and we don't address it at all in the charter. So I don't know. Right. So I guess, can I get a motion to review or approve those with the Jim to check on those two contingencies. I move that we approve, um, that we accept and approve the changes to the declaration of trust that town council recommended with um, clarification on tenure of the trustees and in article three, tenure of the trustees and in article 12, the Middlesex South, um, Registry of Deeds and Middlesex South District of the Land Court to make sure the terminology is correct. Gotcha. Second. A second, Don. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Kell, yes. And Wayne Miller, yes. Thanks, Chaz, for the review. Can all I right, do can one I, more thing? Could I ask a quick, que oh, could I ask a quick question as well? Um, um, the question number one would be, um, did it, did you receive any, um, Mr. Kreidler, any, um, volunteer forms in regards to any of the trustees that were on this? Do we know that? Was um, anything I, submitted directly to you? I wouldn't have seen them. They don't go directly to me. They go to the town clerk's office. Um, mm -hmm. so I haven't seen anything forwarded along yet, but I can check in the morning. Okay. And could you please send me an email in regards to that? Um, I do have a couple that, um, I have told the people to hold off until we had this vote and then I'll have them send it in. So uh, where we, should they be sending that into? Would they be sending it into you, Jim? Uh, no, the, it's actually coming up in, on the agenda in the next bullet or two. Um, the volunteer response forms, if you go to the, the homepage of the website, on the left-hand side, there's a button that talks about employment and volunteer. If you click mm -hmm. that button, the very first sentence on the page that comes up has a click here. If you want to apply, that you click that and it opens up um, a fillable form and you can pull down and if the, the, what you want to do is not listed there, you can, you can add it in the box that says other. Um, so th that'd be what I'd recommend that people do. It's, it's I think going to be a lot easier than people pulling the, the old volunteer response form that was like a hundredth generation PDF off mm -hmm. and filling it out. Right. 
and then would they be able to put their resumes as well because i'd like you the the board to be able to see the backgrounds of the individuals that I are um i don't know if they are interested in being in the trust yeah. I, I don't know as i sit Chaz, if there is a, a way to upload an attachment um when the board is talking there isn't, Jim. Everybody I've seen in the past, and I've done this myself, is a separate email to Kathy saying, so then it goes through a volunteer response form, please attach. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, but is from the there... website's perspective, we could fix that. We could put an upload. Um, oh, I know. I, yeah, that, that, that's true. Is there a posting for uh, housing, a, um, housing trust trustee? And perhaps in there, we, if there is a posting, um, we could put in there, please send an email, uh, as well as the volunteer response form yep. that you find on the homepage. Um, please attach a letter of interest and a resume. Okay, well, we have, uh, we have a housing authority meeting this Thursday um, that we will be discussing a posting to go up in regards to the trustees. Um, and I can uh, forward that information to our, our administrative assistant to make sure that she gets that written up. And, um, um, you know, as far as that's concerned, uh, I, I just want a central location because I know that some of the people that have shown interest that they want to put their resume on there as well. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't Jeff, enough room on the form. So. And in in what I've seen in the past from Kathy, she's very good at attaching all that stuff and getting it to us. So. Okay. Okay. Um, the one other thing I want to say is in Adam's email, he uh, referenced um, a uh, AHT rules and regulations to accompany the, uh, the housing trust document. Maybe that's something that um, the housing authority could talk about at the meeting on Thursday to see if that's somewhere we want to go. I mean, he didn't send us, he said he offered to ascend, to send a um, I think we'd be happy to provide a sample for consideration. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Chaz, if that's anything you guys have talked about or what. Um, we haven't, but you know, I can definitely pull some of that off the my information and and talk with the uh, with the board about it. Sure. Okay. So that okay. we can get this off and running. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to five two before I get there, though. It, Don and, and Veronica. If we can take five three through five five, and if you don't mind moving them to the next meeting as they're not really time sensitive, I have an issue here at home that I have to deal with. Um, and and um, five four we kind of covered Wayne already. We we did, and we can just continue to work on that, um, and that okay. could be part of the the website piece as well. So yeah, I have no problem. I yeah, have thank no you. problem with that. I, we, I appreciate it, guys. Do we need to make a motion, or are we good? No, if you if you get to where are you going next? Five six, is that where you're going next? Uh, five two. So we just set a date. So we have a training at the state ethics on the thirteenth, um, and this came from another discussion we had tonight too, um, with town council that we need some other things too. So yep, Jim, I, I'll review that with you tomorrow, and then we can and work on a, start working on dates with Kate um, per our, our discussion at the end of the, the meeting, um, Veronica. I'm sorry, say that again. So the, the discussion we had at the end of the meeting with uh, town council before we jumped on this oh, yeah. call, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I want to add that to this. I want to try to do it all at once if we can. That sounds good. Okay. I, I just, in fairness to Kate's time and our what we have to spend to, for, to bring her, um, right. I'd like to look at that. So I'll, I'll table that one until we can get that done. Gotcha. Uh, and then we'll move to five six board of selectmen announcements. So, so Jim, can you just move those three to the next meeting? Absolutely, please. Uh, board of selectmen announcements, updates, and reports. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any reports or anything like that. But I had one question: When does the when do we transition to TCAM to the charter the com the access channel, the TCAM. <laughs> the um, after the last meeting where the board approved the operating agreement, it was sent back for one final review by uh, council for TCAM. And after he did his review, he came back and said that all the changes that you had recommended that had been made by uh, the town's council 
Um, the ones that the board voted to approve were all great by him. So we were getting a clean, I actually should have received it today, I didn't see it, a clean version coming in from our council that'll be available for your signature. Once that's signed, TCAM signs, they now formally exist with an operating agreement that the town accountant can then use to be able to work on transfer of funds to the nonprofit such that they can then start their operations. And, and how will it be announced to boards and other community people that might be interested that now you go to them to, I mean, how does that work? Yep, I talked to Jerry. Okay. I talked to Jerry Reset about it. Um, and he said that there's some marketing stuff that he's been putting together that he's worked on that'll, they'll be able to roll out as the announcement that, you know, this is uh, the, new, the new day and the new way. Okay. Okay. That was my only Don. question. Yeah. Okay, Don, did you have anything? No, I have nothing. Okay, five seven board of announcements for events. I don't think we have any. I didn't. Re nobody sent me. How does that usually work? I mean, Beth always sent them to us at planning board. So usually, what happens, Carol, will, will have it in our packet that you know the you know, the band concert. I guess is the the best example. We get those to read, read who is sponsoring, who's doing who's doing the food and what was going to be played and all that fun stuff. So um, with COVID, obviously those are kind of not going to happen yeah. for any time soon. Okay. Okay, 5-8 or reports from board liaisons. I have not met with anybody. I oh, haven't in the past one. two weeks. Okay, so that one's easy and we're off to the last one. 5-9, review and sign payroll bills or Bills payable warrants, excuse me. Can I get a motion, please? I move that we review and sign payroll and bills payable warrants out of session. Second. All those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Cow, yes. Wayne Miller, yes. And can I get a meeting to adjourn? Well, before I do that, I'm sorry. Um, next regular scheduled meeting, everybody good with? What's the date? Is it October 5th or something? Um, yeah, uh, six, it looks like. Sixth. Okay. Okay. Good with you, good with, good with you Don? Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. Very, very briefly, yep. I, I just did get a text back from Adam, Veronica, on your one of your questions for confirmation on appointment with the Housing Trust. He said that the trust will con the trust document will control because it's the later adopted statutory framework. But he'll okay. give you more Thank detail you. on that, but just so you know. Okay, great. He, he's up at this hour working on it. <laughs> well, that makes it easier for the motion. <laughs> right. All right, uh, can I get a meeting to adjourn then, please? Um, I move that we adjourn at 8.34 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Don Klein, yes. Veronica Kell, yes. Wayne Miller, yes. And again, I'm, I apologize to the public for the late start. Um, I did not foresee that coming. So, um, all right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, folks. Good night. Good night.